So here we have Konos Volume 1. And for the sake of this workshop and for this exercise, I'm going to use Konos Volume 1 for the examples to show you in this workshop. Okay, I've explained the timelines. We're just going to lay that aside for a little bit. And now I'm going to presume that I've just got this Konos volume. And I'm the mom at home, and I've got my Konos volume, and I'm very excited about it all. And I begin with uh, opening it up and reading, please read this letter. <laughs> These are very commonly asked questions and answers that are, are here that, you might, that might come to you. So it would be a good idea to start with that, just to get that all out of the way. And then we move on to... Okay, attentiveness, obedience, orderliness, trust, patience, stewardship, honor. Now, where to start? Remember, Konos isn't about starting on page one and working through a curriculum to the end. You're picking the character trait that is appropriate for your family at this specific time. So I'm going to hop right in here and I'm going to pick patience as for the example of these workshops, which is number one, two, three, four, five. It's number five on the list of character traits in this particular volume. Okay, and then you can also look, by the way, at the different topics underneath each character trait. So you as a parent, mom and dad, decide, okay, we really need to focus on patience with our children. Once you've chosen the character trait, you can read the topics to your children. Plant growth and gardening, grain, bread and yeast, human birth and growth, animal birth and growth, and waiting. So you tell the children. We're going to be studying patience. We're going to be learning about being patient. We're going to grow in patience. We're going to study, learn about how God is patient with us and his patience. And to be able to practice and develop patience in us, we're going to be doing these various, looking at these various topics, which are all going to help us to grow in patience. And when you read those topics to your children, you might see an interest spark. One of your children go, oh, I want to know about animal birth. And the other one is going, but mommy, I want to, I want to plant a garden. Okay, so now you've got two children wanting to do two different things. So now what you will do is a family decide, okay, well, let's start with the plants or let's start with the animals, whichever it happens to be, and you discuss it together and you say, we will be getting to the plants or we will be getting to the animals. We're going to start with this one. We'll move on to that one. That's what is exciting about Konos is it's a family integrated thing. You can pray about it. You can stop, have your Bible study at this point and see what God leads you into doing? Is it the plant um, topic that you need to be focusing on to train patients or is it the animals? And in the end, you become united in deciding that, okay, let's go with animals um, to the, the, the animal topic under patients. And while that is happening, everybody's understanding the other one is needing to be patient to wait to do plants. And now we're helping that one to grow in patience, that family member. Okay, so that is how you go about choosing the character trait, and then that is how you go about choosing which topic you're going to begin with, within that character trait. Again, you don't have to start with the first topic just because it comes first in the list um, under that character trait. All right, so now you've made your decision. It's patience. And now I'm going to go into showing you what I'll do next. Um, we've decided on patience. So, fortunately, Konos is in a file. So now we take out the whole unit of patience. So I take it out. Here I've got my patience unit. I put this into a smaller file or into a plastic sleeve flip file, whatever suits me. And I now have my patience unit. I now put my file aside. I don't have to have this big heavy file everywhere I go and on the coffee table and getting spilt tea on it or whatever. I only have my unit that I'm busy focusing on. So now I've got my patience. Um, unit out of my big file and I've got my yellow pages and all the activity pages. Right, we decided um, that we're going to do examples from the topic of plant growth and gardening. It happens to be the first one but that worked out like that. It could have been anyone. All right? And now we get to the yellow pages. Now people ask, what about the yellow pages? I'm a bit confused by the yellow pages because it says on the side, older, middle, younger. We've got examples of older, middle, younger, and that these are the books we should be reading, and these are the activities to do, and this is week one of two. And you know what's happening? Moms are trying to do whatever is um, referenced here on the yellow pages, doing what activities suggested for the older child, the middle child, the younger child, reading the relevant books, and so on and so forth. What we say 
is with these yellow pages, is don't even worry to reference to them. Okay? They're going to trip you up. You're going to try and get bogged down with doing what is suggested in the week and the time that it's suggested. It's not what it's meant to be about. This is just meant to be a general guide as to if you're having a bit of a struggle as to knowing which activities would be appropriate for your older, middle, younger child. Here's a guide. But you're going to read through this unit and you're going to know you're not going to give your four-year-old a diagram to draw, but you're going to give the 12-year-old that diagram to draw as is what is indicated in the activities. So you don't actually really need this. So don't let it get you all in a knot. In fact, why don't you take them out completely? You've taken your whole patient's unit out. So let's do this. Keep the patient's um, main page. Waiting without complaining, that's what our focus is going to be. Let's take all these yellow pages out of the, our little file that we're having, having separately from the big file and put them back into the big file. So now what I've got left is just the patient's unit. All right, so now this is where the first page of the unit actually does apply. <laughs> we, this is about the only time we do something in a specific sequential order when we are starting the new character trait. And let me explain why. On your very first page, your first white page that is, of your patient's unit, you're going to have the definition, which is patience is waiting without complaining. You're also going to have your objectives to recognize the things for which we must wait. Other people, traffic, appointments, growth, learning a skill, events, to wait constructively, preparing the children to wait, how to wait constructively. And then the method to recognize the things for which we must wait. Okay, that is your definition page. So you is going to keep this as your focus. So what I've suggested to many families and what we did ourselves was you take that, you photocopy it, you put it on the fridge, you put it in the children's bedrooms, you paste it up around the house <laughs> so that everybody's got this in sight. So this becomes the focus and this is what you all know that you're working towards. And now go through this page with your children as a family, even preferably dad. You want to know how dad gets involved at this point. Dad could sit at the din dinner table after dinner and say, right, family, we are going to be growing in patience. We're going to be studying um, God as a God of patience and why he wants us to be patient and why we need to develop this characteristic. So these are going to be our focuses. Really good idea for Dad to get on board here and to present this particular beginning of a new character trait to the family. So now we've taken care of that. We've taken care of the yellow pages. We've taken care of photocopying and pasting our first white page up everywhere and dad we hope has introduced patients to the family as going to be the focus. So now mom is going to get on with it, I'm presuming, in some instances it's dad. And the first thing you're going to face on the, the next page after you've got past your definitions is the resources. Now this theme follows throughout every character trait. You're going to have your first page being your definition and your objectives and your methods and then you're going to have the resources and examples to put on the timeline and uh, vocabulary. So I'm just going to focus on those few things for starters because thereafter you go into your actual activities. The rest of your pages are all about the lists of activities to be done or that you can do while studying and growing in patience and teaching your children to be patient. Okay, so let's start with where it always begins, and that's Bible. It's always at the beginning, after your definitions and object objectives. And please note, we, I've kept this Bible here in, in sight because everything is founded on the Word. That's why we do KONOS. That's why we've got a KONOS manual. That's why we're training our children in patience, because... We are wanting to take what is here in the Word of God and we're wanting to put it into practice. It's one thing learning about being patient people and God telling us in His Word that we must be patient. But now how do we actually practice this and how do we apply it? We can just incidentally in our everyday living, but the absolute incredible gift of Konos is it helps us to be intentional and focused on that particular character trait. Yes, you're going to be busy with others going, now please listen, mommy's talking, pay attention. If you've already done attentiveness, you, would have, you will be able to reference to that. So remember when we did attentiveness, what we learned about the importance of being attentive? And so this is what happens with Konos. It all just starts to grow and build on one another. So the, the character traits just develop and grow. Okay, so we start with Bible at the beginning of each character trait. So if you've got attentiveness, you would have done the definition, the objectives, the method, and then Bible. Your Bible is your scripture that is pertaining to this unit, 
been patients. So they'll have some examples of scripture for patients, and then furthermore, they will have some characters to put on your timeline. Remember, we spoke about the timeline earlier. I'm going to give you a quick glimpse at that. Just to show you very quickly that now that you, we write at the beginning of our patients unit and you've got examples um, suggested here of people to cut out and put on your timeline, you're going to get your oops, timeline character. You're going to select the couple of examples that they've suggested and then you get your children to cut them out and go and place them on the timeline according to the year. So that's what we do next. Now these are people that are now in our focus and our reference. The example that I used for your attentiveness was Samuel. So they would put Samuel there. And now you're going to be perhaps looking into some aspects of Alexander Graham Bell and what that's got to do with attentiveness. And then he would go on. And now you're going to move on to the next step in your Konos living. So that's just a quick reference to that. Okay. The next thing that comes up on your, at your beginning pages of your unit is one that trips too many people up, and that is vocabulary. Now, <laughs> your reference of vocabulary might be spelling test on Friday. That's not the case in Oikos learning lifestyle. This is how I use the vocabulary in our family. Here we have chlorophyll, pollination, nectar, uh, pollinator, capillary action, dissect, clarify, horticulturists. Now, I'm saying this to my six-year-old. They haven't heard of these words in their life before. So I read through the vocabulary list and I say to them, now, all those words that you've heard that are brand new to you, don't know what they mean, we're going, while we're studying to be more patient and while we're learning and growing in patience, this vocabulary is going to become part of our living. We're going to understand what it means and why. So what the vocabulary for us was, was to expand our children's vocab basically. It wasn't so a spelling test. It wasn't a spelling list. I didn't take five uh, words from the vocabulary, vocabulary list once a week and get them to make sure their spelling was correct and they could memorize the definition and tell me. What for? If they don't understand what capillary action is, why do they even need to know about it? And maybe we don't even cover that when we're doing it through the, um, when we're going through the unit because maybe they're too young and maybe it's not relevant or appropriate. So please, don't let the vocabulary list trip you up. The other thing is, when we finish this particular unit of patients and studying plants, for example, we would then come back to this vocabulary and I would read through it again and they would be quite impressed at how much they had come to understand and realize that now they've got all this knowledge that they didn't have before. But what, that's not what is important to us as parents. We're not really concerned about how much knowledge they've got about plants. What we were more concerned about was to see if their patience had improved, if the, the character trait of patience was stronger in them than, than when we began the unit. That's what our focus needs to be set on. Okay, so that's the next thing that comes up in your white pages is vocabulary. The next one that trips people up is the resource list because now there's a whole page of all these resources. Oh, shock. Can't find this book on sunflowers and can't find this book on seeds or bulbs, but it doesn't matter. You look through the resource list to see, hmm, that's a big variety of um, different suggestions. You're either going to go and find um, research on Google about bulbs, if that's what you're going to be planting in your garden, or you're not. So the resource list isn't you have to go find all these books now and you've got to go to the library or you've got to go online and look for these books. It's again a reference. It's something there for you to um, reference back to. And actually what it did for me, to be honest, was it, it just prompted some ideas of I would see the title of a book and think, oh, that would be something that might be interesting to look into. Um, the, the medicinal value of herbs, for example, just because I saw the title of the book doesn't mean I had to go and get that particular book, but it did spark the idea of when we do our herb garden, I must remember to bring the medicinal element in. But then the reason why it's on the resource list is to say to me that it might be referenced to through the activities. When I'm reading the activities, it might say reference to the medicinal book on herbs. Okay? But now I don't have that book. But that's not actually the point, is it? The point is we're building a herb garden. Why? So that we can learn to be patient and wait for those herbs to grow. And then once they're grown, we can use them in our food. And now we're using them in our food. And so what is the nutritional value or the medicinal value to them? So if you can just 
keep that focus happening all the time as your, as your anchor, as your stay as to why you are even doing Konos in the first instance. Please remember it's not about teaching your children all the knowledge that you can give them through this experience. The knowledge is the byproduct. The knowledge, if it's there or if it's not there, isn't relevant. Remember, the only thing that stays and that's of great importance to God is the Word of God. The Word of God is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And knowledge is going to pass away. And the knowledge that you give them today might not be relevant for their adult life. So what knowledge is important to God that you're giving them? And I know the answer to that. It's Him. Knowledge of Him. Knowledge of His Word. That is what is important. And if this patience unit is helping you to go back to that and helping you to grow in patience because His Word said so, that's what Konos is about and that's what the Oikos Foundation is all about. Seek first God and then all the things will be added. Okay. So now we've got past the little hiccups, the vocabulary page and the resource page. And now we can get into the living of the activities and how to actually apply this to your daily living by starting out on reading through all the activities in this unit. So now you've got uh, your your unit out and this is the patient's unit and we've decided on plants in this instance and so now I'm going to as a mom sit with my cup of tea on the weekend and I'm going to read through these pages it's not that many pages to read it's very very short I'm going to read through them I'm going to get inspired I'm going to be going through them thinking well that's not going to work that's way too advanced for my children my eldest is eight they won't cope with that so we won't do that next one oh that looks like fun we'll do that one circle tick make little notes you'll see I've got little notes written on the side. Some of the activities are circled on this page. I've got three um, activities circled. We're going to do those three on that page. Just to get yourself prepared and ready for your Konos living, you read through all of that. While you've read through all of that, you've marked what you feel you're going to be doing, you've got a general idea. We're going to be busy with this unit for quite a few months, or we possibly We'll only do a few activities in this unit because we need to get to responsibility because that puppy we've ordered is on the way and I'm going to just do patience in between while we're waiting. But as soon as the puppy arrives, we must get onto a responsibility. So then you'll know we're not going to do the plants and the, well, maybe you'd be do animals in the patient section in this, in this instance, the example I just picked up, um, because perhaps you'd be doing animal growth while you're waiting for the puppy because you know that it's on its way. And now you'll be doing patience and you'll be doing the animal. You see how it just all works out like that. But I'm just giving you an idea of how to prepare. Okay, so you read through all, all of this and you select what you're going to do. A lot, few, whatever is appropriate for your time frame. But about time frame, you ask how much time must I spend on patience. What I'm saying to you is you don't just jump all over the character traits and go from patience to responsibility. Yes, if the puppy arrives and you need to move on, we'll then do responsibility. But ideally, you need to stay with this character trait until you see fruit. Can you see your children growing in patience? Are you able to confidently say, you know, before we started patience, I didn't even know what I meant when I told them be patient. Now they've really got an understanding. I think we can move on because there's another character trait that really needs our attention and we'll come back to patience again because I saw all those nice activities for older children that my children aren't ready for yet because you're going to revisit it and revisit it. We know there's some <laughs> character traits that we re revisited over and over and over because we had to because we weren't established enough in those particular character traits that we saw in our children. One child would get strong quickly in a particular character trait and the other one needed revisiting of that character trait time and time again. So that again is dependent on your family's needs. But the, the goal, the sort of measure, if you're looking at trying to get a measure is look for fruit and stay with it until you see the fruit. Okay, so now you've read through your, um, your, all your activities, you've marked what you need. Alongside that, You've seen, oh, we're going to need some masking tape for that activity. And, oh, we're going to need some seeds. And maybe I'll get some herb seeds and some flower seeds. And maybe I'll get some fast-growing flower seeds and some slower-growing flower seeds because we're trying to establish and train patients here. So you will then be making notes um, in whichever form is appropriate to you and of the um, items you're going to need, the resources. Now, notice these resources are now important, the ones I'm talking about now, not the books. 
from the resource list that, I, that is at the beginning of this unit. The resources you're going to need are seeds. And so you know you're going to be planting seeds this week, so you need to make a note of that. Okay, so what I did when I read through the whole thing, I made a note of everything that looked like it was going to be needed um, throughout the course of doing patience. And then it was in my shopping list. So when I was out and about, I could see something that was already in my reference. I remembered I'd prepared by reading through the activities, knew that we we're going to be needing that particular thing. We're in the right shop at the right, you know, and we, we could then get it. Even though I knew it was maybe going to be a month or two or three before we were going to actually be getting to that specific activity. How you go about planning, getting your resources, how many you get or not is really entirely up to you, obviously. Mm -hmm. But... I'm just encouraging you to get the big picture of this whole unit. And included in that is your shopping list of the items you need. And the items are very basic. A lot of the time they may be already be in your home. So don't be nervous that it's going to be requiring of you to go and get items that you've never heard of or you don't know how to source. Or I, I, don't, I don't recall coming across something like that that I couldn't find. In all the years we did Konos, I never came across that. I might have come across that in my mind, for example, go and get a cow's eyeball when you're doing attentiveness. Oh my goodness, where do we get an eyeball from? Well, I don't know what to do. So now you say to your children, I wonder where we get an eyeball. And now they're learning. Now, how do we go and get something where we didn't even know where to start? Well, let's think about it. Eyeballs, cows, butchers. Let's try the butcher. Let's ask him, see if he, if he can guide us. So we go to the butcher and we say, We've got a very strange request. We need a, need a cow's eyeball. And he thinks it's quite amusing. So now you can tell him why, that we're home educating. And now you can share <laughs> your life with him a little bit and explain to him he's teaching our children to be attentive. And so we're going to dissect an eye. And so then he says, well, I'll, I'll be able to get an eye. I'll find out from the abattoir and I'll probably be able to get an eyeball for you. Um, and we say, well, don't get one. Let's have one each. Can you get us five eyeballs? So there's lots of stories, actually, from families that we've heard about the whole cow's eyeball experience, which I can't go into now on this, on this workshop. But just to show you that even when you hit a bit of a stumbling block going, oh, my goodness, I don't know where to get that. Well, it's okay because you just go through the process with your family and you will eventually source it. And what if you can't source it? Well, then you don't do that activity. Simple as that. You skip by that one, carry on to the next one. It doesn't matter. What does matter? That you, whatever you're doing is practicing patience, growing in the character trait that you've chosen to do. It's not about the activity. It's the only reason that it's about the activity is because the activity is helping you to mold, train, exercise, and develop patience in your children as well as yourself. Many parents tell us how much Konos has helped their character traits to grow and to get stronger. Okay, so that is your preparation. There it is. Read through the unit, mark what you need, make your shopping list, get a big picture, share it with your husband, talk about it together as parents, discuss it with your children, tell them where you're headed, and then you're going to start living it. On plan and prepare. You might have heard people saying, oh, Konos is too much preparation and it's too much to plan and there's not enough help. If you've heard those um, comments, I hope that this workshop has helped to settle all of that and you realize actually something I didn't go into great detail with here, which perhaps I should mention before we close off on this workshop, is the fact that your planning and your preparation when it comes to the physical doing um, is involving all of you, all the children, dad, everybody. Whereas before, the planning you were involved in was just reading through the, the unit, as I've explained. But when it comes to the actual doing of the activity, you don't have to prepare the lesson and get all the pots lined up and get your bag of soil all ready and get the shovel. That you do together. You say, okay, guys, let's go get the pots ready. Let's go get the soil. Let's go dig some soil out to put into the plots, pots. You do that together. You don't have it all pre-planned and have everything lined up. That's part of the Oikos lifestyle is to learn to be a family integrated, doing things together, discovering together, growing together in that particular characteristic that you're focusing on. So your preparation doesn't need to be excessive and too much and too much to handle and too much to get all organized before the event because after all, the children are going to learn better if they're doing it alongside you, preparing and planning with you because I'm sure as a parent 
you already know what I'm about to say, and that is those skills that you're teaching, just in the preparation and planning, are going to be skills that are going to be very valuable to them in their adult life. Don't let them miss out on it because mom's trying to be too organized.